How do you discipline your kids? Do you think that Christians should have different considerations when it comes to disciplining your kids? It should be a very interesting and I hope useful conversation that we'll be having with our parenting panel, which I will introduce shortly. But we begin with your perspective on the streets. We want to be able to give our kids lots of choices and use lots of logical explanation and logical consequences for behavior. I usually try to explain to them what I think they've done wrong. Discipline them? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I ever disciplined my kids. If that doesn't work, then the next step is probably a little slap. <laughs> my kid has, has to sit on a naughty chair for a little while. Um, take things away that he doesn't like, slap him on the legs if he's really, really naughty. Obviously we don't believe in, uh, in sort of physical discipline, but um, I believe that if you can incorporate children into the discussion around what they should and shouldn't do, they're more likely to follow the rules. I think it's about education, it's about training them, it's about teaching them life skills. I think discipline is much overrated. Those were the thoughts of some people on the streets in Toronto. And now to share with us their perspectives, we have our parenting panel. Joining me now are Patrick Douglas. Patrick is the father of seven. Yes, there's a new one in there. Um, Jillian Cantor, she's the mother of three. Mm -hmm. And Jason Gennaro is the father of five. So we have lots of experience here, combined years of experience. Let me start with this. Before you had children, did you and your spouse talk about how you were going to discipline your kids? No. For us? No, you it never was, talked about it. It was no. I mean, we talked about kids. I think we might have talked uh, occasionally about if a certain something happened, but th there was no coordinated, let's get out the textbook and okay. figure out and plan every, yeah. How about you guys? every state. I'd say the same. We had amazing ideals, how many kids we wanted, <laughs> what their names would be, and how perfect they would be, and not require any discipline whatsoever. So. Okay, good. Yeah, and, and they, they all turned, turned out, out perfect. It's right. just amazing. We've already got the perfect out to be true. Patrick? Yeah, I think we had just general discussions about it, but nothing, anything, nothing um, you know, hard. Uh, so you basically are figuring it out as you're yes. going on, yeah. you know, I mean, those of you that have older kids, I mean, your oldest one is 13, 12? 13 this year, yeah. So you pretty much have it figured out. <laughs> no, I would say the opposite. <laughs> well, I would say that we have a good understanding of how we're doing with kids up until 13, but yeah. we're still figuring it out. Definitely not uh, experts, we're still learning. How? And each kid is different, so each kid requires a, a different sort of uh, approach depending right. on the situation. How much of your, can I call them styles, discipline styles, uh, has to do with how you were disciplined growing up? It's huge. Yeah, I think uh, with my own uh, upbringing and upbringing my wife, uh, it was, uh, I guess, very firm and loving discipline. And so that's uh -huh. the type of discipline that I learned. And, and also just looking at other families and what's effective generally um, has sort of influenced the, the, the style and uh, how we would discipline our children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same? I would agree. Yeah, yeah, I think same here too. Like, I mean, I'm sorry, my husband and I were raised, I think, with fairly similar discipline styles. We were both, we were also both the youngest in our families, and so um, David and I learned how to behave by watching our older siblings get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a firstborn, I'd say you got away with murder. Yes, probably. But then that also, you know, we had, we were able to observe a lot of the parenting styles of our, our moms and dads. So, um, yeah, I, I guess that's how much did your, how much did your parents? Uh, I don't want to say get in the way, but sometimes that's what happens. When you, you, you first had children, your parents were telling you, oh, you should do this or you shouldn't do this. Did that be an issue? Was that an issue for any, uh, any of you? Not on our part. My mom and dad are parents? not advice givers, even when you straight out ask them. They oh. like you to figure it out on your own, which can be yeah, frustrating, yeah. but they also, I think there's a reason for that. They don't want to interfere and they want us to develop as parents yeah. and develop our yeah, own yeah. style. Um, yeah, so it is. it can be tough sometimes and you're like, just straight out tell me, what do I need to do and how is it going to fix it? Right. But then in a lot of situations too, I don't think they know the answer because my son is different than their children were, so what can they say that different it's going to... Yeah. Right. And it's a different world, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. They have different influences. I think, I think about my, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, when they were kids themselves and even just married, totally different. Just television was just yeah, introduced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. now we're looking True. at media in every aspect of the house. You can carry the full internet with you in your pocket. Things are. I mean, that that doesn't affect, say, a three-year-old, but you know. No, but it'll affect. Yeah, it'll affect true. the older kids. So times are are much different. So did you look to books or or, or magazines or anything? Like, how did you? Uh, 
Because the question is, I'm a little scared with the idea that you are figuring it out as you go. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> so well, I think before you go into the how we discipline, I think it's important to step back and look at the why we discipline. And I think that informs our choices in terms of like the t different styles or the different approaches yeah, yeah, that we okay. take. And I think for us, and probably for a lot of Christian Catholic parents, is that ultimately we discipline to in enculturate virtues in our children. And those right. virtues then help them to become saints. And so I think you know if, if we're trying to get them towards developing uh, their own virtues and be self-disciplined, you know, and there's different stages from when they're young, younger children, they become a bit older. You can start introducing more, more um, in terms of uh, you know reasons for things and and trying to encourage them to be better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ultimately that's where we want them to be. But, but that's part of that conversation that you should have with your spouse before. I mean, or at some point, or is this something that just kind of you just figure, oh, we agree on this, we want our kids well, to just, grow up to be healthy, contributing members of society? Well, if you're, if you're in a serious Catholic relationship, I think part of the idea is that each spouse is trying to help the other one get to heaven, and then each one of them is trying help to help their children, children get yeah. to heaven, which is what Patrick is, was just saying. And so that forms the basis of the why. You want to turn them into saints. You want to be saints yourselves. Right. And that actually, in a sense, creates sort of the safe fence around which you can discipline. Because if you bring your kids up with a vir in a virtuous, virtuous lifestyle, then what you're doing is you're setting the stage yeah. for an easier amount of discipline because they you know and they know what's expected of them. No, absolutely makes sense. Like how do you know where you're going how do you know how to get there if you don't know where you're going? Um, okay, to, to spank or not to spank? It's just because I think that's really the question that a lot of people have. Yes. You look at the, at the at scriptures, and there are tons of passages that you know spare the rod and spoil the child. I mean, I, I, there's tons of proverbs about that type of corporal uh, punishment or discipline. What do you guys think? No, nobody I, wants to take nobody it. Wants to, I say, I'll say, depends. And the reason I say that is. Uh, we've never spanked. It's not our personality. It's not our style. I don't feel it's it's uh, terribly effective in certain ways, especially if, say, you have aggressive children already. That you know, or maybe your boys. You've got boys who are aggressive and trying to teach them not to hit, but then giving them the the mixed signal of hitting. However, right. at the same time, I would say that you can never take that option away from a parent because each child is different and each family is different and parents are the ultimate and first educators of their children and they have to use the resources available to them. Again, you're not, you should never hit or discipline period out of anger. That's the, that's the wrong mentality. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, the parents have to have uh, certain options available to them. Yeah, but I, ha, were any of you spanked as kids? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And so was I. Yeah. I was barely, to be honest. It was that's barely. the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened, Jason. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. No, but I remember being, and I wasn't spanked a lot, but what I remember it was associated with anger. So I don't remember the spankings. I remember mm -hmm. the anger, and and mm -hmm. so I don't know how you can spank your kids if it's not an anger. I think there's different strategies and there's different reasons for spanking. And I'll give you an example of uh, back in my childhood. And we, our family was in a grocery store, and uh, for my family watching, they might remember my, my youngest uh, brother. <laughs> he was throwing a temper tantrum on the floor, and we had our youngest brother. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandmother was with us, and uh, you know he, he was just you know throwing a tantrum on the floor. You know, very embarrassing. Parents' worst nightmare. And my grandmother just goes up very quickly, swiftly, and calmly, and gives him a nice little tap on the on the bottom, and he just stands right up. And, and walks out of the store very calmly, yeah. and that's all he needed. Uh, sometimes, you know, you can't rationalize with a with a younger child. Um, I would say spanking is not effective for older children, and there's okay. other means yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, of disciplining in, in that way. But I would say it's sort of a last resort. And the principles that my wife and I would would uh, consider is whether or not the behavior is is bordering on something that's dangerous to themselves that's or true. dangerous yeah, to true. others and it requires a very quick and you know severe response so that they do not engage in that behavior but it again. also sounds like your grandmother had already established the fact that there can be a bigger consequence and the tap was not so much a spanking but a reminder is like smarten up or else yeah, yeah. Uh, how much of uh, our parenting and i guess this is a larger question 
not just about discipline, but how we parent has to do with the fact that there is a clear uh, connection between the consequences to our behavior. Well, there should be, and that's part of the stage setting or the scene setting. Right? If you, you kids should always know about consequences to their behaviors. Uh, one thing that's always stuck with me, and my it was one of my father's favorite phrases, is that there are always consequences to actions. Mm -hmm. Every action, mm -hmm. whether it be an action that you undertake or a physical action in the you know the physical world, whatever action happens, there's a consequence to that. Does action. that mean that while they're little? you create a consequence to teach them. I mean, when my, my kid, my oldest one is 15, there are real consequences to his behavior. I don't have to invent them. But when he was two, there might have not been a consequence that he didn't pick up the Legos. So does that mean that I have to create a consequence to teach him that I, every behavior has consequences? I think so. Yes. Even if it's yes. an exaggerated consequence? Like you didn't pick up your Legos so you don't get to watch TV tonight? That would no. be harsh. Well, that's... I think you go, that's the wrong way to go about it. I think it would be, if you want to watch TV, we're going to pick up our Legos. Yes. Okay. I would say the consequence to the, the Lego issue is the Legos, if you don't pick them up, I pick them up, and they go away. Like, you're not going to be right. able to play with Absolutely. them again until okay. you learn how so to play with them properly. Okay. But yeah, just even those few minutes where you can just take them out of that situation, I think yeah. that's what we're learning at this stage anyway is helpful, just to get them out of that situation, to well, explain good. to him what those, that consequence yeah. could be. And yeah. then see if he will then change his behavior. If then, okay, I kind of get that now. Now I'm going to pick up those Legos. And that's good too because at three, he's already understanding, and you're you're uh, be, you're st having being able, starting to have that conversation that you're going to be able to have with them when he's older, mm -hmm. even before. Yeah. Kids even under two understand consequences. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They know because they can try and manipulate you. Kids are not as soon as they understand not, birthday cake. They yeah. understand kids, are, <laughs> kids are smart. Yeah, they do. Okay, we're going to take a little break. Don't go anywhere. It's a short break, but when we come back, we're going to continue this discussion. And in particular, we're going to try to get a little more suggestions out of our panel. So stay tuned. <laughs> Let us know your perspective. Email us at perspectives at saltandlighttv.org or reach us by mail. Perspectives at Salt and Light Television, 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C1P1 or call us toll free at 1-888-302-7181. Let your perspective be heard. I think a lot of the adults these days don't have a lot of respect and they tend to let their kids like run wild like in restaurants and things like that. I think there's a lot of enabling that happens with parents that lets kids uh, continue poor behavior. It's a big effort to to uh, keep on top of kids and correct their their actions. Well, they have everything. You know, they have lots of toys. They have everything they want. So it seems like they they are not so so disappointed. Economic well-being has probably a greater impact on what we're seeing, but no, I think kids are pretty good. Okay, so do you guys think that today's kids, your kids, are l not your particular kids, but today kids today are less disciplined than, say, when we were growing up? I, I would agree. Why so? Wow. Well, so today's parents, I would say, a good number of them sort of practice avoidance parenting uh, or avoidance uh, discipline, where you know they allow the child to um, engage in behavior without any boundaries, uh, and sometimes when there are boundaries, um, they're they're not able to have an opportunity to realize that there are consequences to negative actions. So is that because the parents have no clue or because the parents don't want, are avoiding confrontation? I think it's avoiding confrontation. Yeah. So we're Kids are less disciplined because parents are less disciplined. Uh -huh. Parenting is hard work and yeah, discipline yeah. is hard work. It, it takes a lot of repetition. It's so you've true. got to do it over it's and true. over and over again. You've got to confirm what you've done. There has to be a consistency there. And, and even, so, you know what, we were saying that earlier, that, that sometimes that you put them on a timeout and it means that you have to go on a timeout too because how many times do you, t <laughs> you have put to them back them in it, you right. know, and they walk away and you have to put them back and it's like... Precisely. It takes yeah. away from your free time. You can't read yeah, that magazine be, or yeah, watch that. play Angry Birds or do whatever. You <laughs> actually have yeah, to yeah. go ahead and, and be the parent. And that's, that's hard for people when they don't see the greater good out of discipline. You know, maybe 50 years ago, people saw that di if you, everybody disciplined their children, society was better for it. Right. There was a greater idea that society meant something, that everybody contributed to society, less individualism. So the fact that this is like a societal situation, does that make it harder for you as parents to discipline your kids? 
especially when they're in school already? I, uh, personally, I, not necessarily, uh, because we go against the grain on so many other things <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we know. With, with, yeah. with discipline, it's just one more thing. Mm -hmm. if, you pers if you believe what you're doing is right, then, f then it's easier to, to do it. Yeah. And that's anything. That, just, that doesn't speak necessarily to faith. It also speaks to if you believe that you're going to be the best shot putter in the world and you go ahead and you put your so, mind to it, it, and that happens. Does it impact how you, you know, do they get a sleepover or not or when they go stay with their grandparents or what daycare you choose because they're not disciplining the same way you would discipline them? How, how does that impact your parenting? Well, I think there's obviously always outside influences, but what it boils down to is that in the in the heart of your home is where you do set the stage. So even though things may be varying a little bit if they go to grandparents' house or if they go to daycare or to school, um, when they get home, they, they have to realize that you as the parents are in charge. You're the authority. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hopefully if you ingrain that in them enough that they'll take that out with them right. and uh, have a little bit more self-discipline when they get into those yeah. uh, areas. And the more time kids spend at home, the more time you have to mold them. To turn them into little Jasons. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. Or Jasonettes. Yes. <laughs> but if a child leaves the house at 6 a.m. and doesn't get back till 7 p.m., gets bathed and put into bed, okay. your, whatever your discipline is may not be as effective mm -hmm. as it could okay. be because you just don't have time to reinforce okay. it. And you just brought up a period. whole other point, which is how much do we as parents need to be home? Because that's another issue, and I, and I think that maybe, yes, kids might be less disciplined, but is it because parents are not home, because they're working two jobs, or, or single parents? How, much, how important is it for you as parents to be home? And I recognize that some people don't have the choice, mm -hmm. but you know, we were talking about flex hours for you, Jason. I know you're staying yeah. at home, Jillian. And that's crucial. That's, <clears throat> yeah, there's lots of discussion of whether or not I would return to work. Do I need to return to work? And ultimately, what has that what provided the answer for us was I can't imagine not having them not just with me but in our home during the day and that I wouldn't know what's happening I wouldn't know the discipline necessarily that with well, someone would, else's discipline exactly them. and I want to be the, that person I want I'm the mom I want to be the one that is yeah. forming them not someone that's being paid to do it right okay um, do, are, are, do you have any fears or concerns when you discipline your children like I've spoken to some people who say well I'm, I'm concerned that I that I might be disciplining them too much. Do you have any similar fears? I think my fear is looking into <laughs> the long term and like I have an idea of, you know, those kids that sometimes you see in church, like I want my kid to be like that one. How do I do that? And thinking that w this action that I'm taking today, is that ultimately gonna end up to that child that I first, that, you know, I hope for and that the, who's gonna listen to me and be loving and generous and a, a contributor to society in a positive way. So. Are you afraid of traumatizing them? No, but I think that, but I think that sometimes you may second guess individual decisions. Right. But, as Jillian was saying, and as we mentioned earlier, if you set the right stage, if you're looking to uh, create that virtuous lifestyle, th then you have a more complete package. If you only look at discipline as a single item, without context, right. apart from itself, then it's very easy to travel down the road of, did I do that right or did, that, did I do that wrong or yeah, we're doing yeah. things wrong? But if you're looking at the whole package, the whole, your whole parenting, mm -hmm. uh, the whole way you parent, yeah, yeah, yeah. then that's one aspect of it and together it'll, it'll, right, all, it'll right. all come together. Yeah, I don't think there's such a thing as perfect parenting and as much as I aspire to want <laughs> to do things perfectly, I have to step back and say, you know what, like, there's going to be a couple times where like I'm going to fail or not do things as I should have, but I think those I have to take those as learning opportunities to think, okay, you know what, this is a process, you know, and hopefully with God's grace, we're gonna we're gonna end up where we want to bring our kids to. Okay, okay. So if you had one piece of advice that you would want to pass on to that new parent or parent that's really struggling with with discipline in their house, what would be that one important thing that you want to tell them? I think it's a piece of advice that I read off of them, <clears throat> excuse me, that I read off of them, a mommy blog. And that was, it kind of relates to the, do you worry that you're going to be traumatizing your child? And like every day I, I worry about those mistakes that I'm making and what the effect will be on Joseph or on Henry. And, and there, I, yeah, in her consideration of her children um, and that the way that she and her husband were, were raising their kids as faithful servants of God, uh, they chose to focus on the fact that God 
gave these specific children to them because of who they were. Their weaknesses and strengths. We're going to jive with the weaknesses and strengths of this mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, that God entrusted them to raise them to be the person that he had already created them to be. So there's nothing that we can do that can mess that up. God has a plan for that mm -hmm. child. And so it was, that was so hopeful for me and it's something that I mm -hmm. cling to because it's reassurance and it's, uh, it just makes me, okay, oh, you know what, in the end, I'm not going to mm -hmm. destroy him. He, right. he will come out in the end being who God needs him to be. And God, mm -hmm. amazingly enough, has said that you're the best person for this child. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's... That's good advice, good. Yeah, I think you have to put in the effort um, up front and while your children are young. I'll borrow a thought from Dr. Ray Gurundi, who's a clinical psychologist and a uh, profit uh, speaker on uh, children. And uh, he says it's like a bank account and you deposit early and then as time goes on, you live off the interest. And with my family, I'm starting to experience that. Yeah, in, true. In he, he, largely due to the fact that my children know what the expectations are and they're teaching younger children yeah. that. So it's, it's, it's a lot advice. easier. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've experienced that too, Jason. I'd say don't listen to me or anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> say go with your gut. You know, God has uh, written lots of things on our hearts, uh, including the natural law, we already know what to do. We already know the right things to do. Your conscience tells you the right things to do. Now, people's consciences, of course, can become dulled over time. Yeah. But as parents, we, it's a natural instinct. You know mm -hmm. how to do things. Trust yourself. Okay, well, good. We have to end the conversation here, but the discussion continues on Facebook, uh, facebook.saltandlighttv.org. <laughs> We're going to uh, perhaps conclude, reflect on our conversation by leaving the last word to the one who is the word. So this is from Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate." So that's from Psalm 127. Patrick? I think the going to bed late and getting up early resonates with me. Someone who wants to make sure that things are perfect and we have a plan laid out for the children. The kids are waking up at 7 a.m. and they're going to bed at this time. And So, I mean, there's all these ideas that I have of what perfect parenting and the right plan is for the children. but. I think I also have to step back and recognize, you know what, you know, God is really in charge here mm -hmm. and just leave it up to him and I'll do my best, but, uh, you know, just cooperate with his grace. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Julie. The word anxious is what resonates with me. Um, and it's just, yeah, because you, you know, you set those goals, you have those ideals. And as we set out with children aged three and one, we see a lot of those ideals come crashing down and we're like anxiously trying to figure out, well, what's the plan? How do we discipline? What is going to be the best way to, you know, to form our children? Um, but if we entrust this to the Lord, then we have a lot less worrying that we need to do. He's going to take care of it. I mean, ultimately, we have responsibilities as parents. We can't deny that, but uh, he will guide our family as he needs us to. Thank you. Jason? Yeah, the last bit of that psalm struck me when uh, we talk about how you have your quiver full, and that is your pride. That's what you can look to other people and say, I've... I've done a good job and it shows that you get out what you put into it much of what like what Patrick was saying earlier is that it, discipline is not an easy task you've got to work at it so in the same way if you cultivate you have your quiver full because you've worked to fill it then you will get out something good something that you can be proud of in the end good thank you very much I, I hope that this conversation has been as useful to you as it has been to me um, we have to leave it there our parenting panel Patrick Douglas, father of seven, Jillian Cantor, mother of three, and Jason Gennaro, father of five. Uh, write to us, let us know what fears, what concerns you have when it comes to disciplining your kids. Perspectives at saltandlighttv.org, and remember to visit us online, saltandlighttv.org slash perspectives. That's all for tonight. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>